For six of the eight quarters of this series, the Mavericks have been clearly the better team than the Los Angeles Clippers, despite the Clippers, a 1-0 series lead. This one, all Mavs early. Oh, Porzingis, the big fella, getting out some of the frustration for being thrown out from the first game. Mavs, an early eight-point lead. Second quarter, the lead is 15. Luka distributing. Boban. Go, big fella. Doesn't even have to jump to throw that down. He had 13 points, 6 of 8 from the floor for Boban. Still in the second. Mavs lead is 8. Porzingis. Oh, the range. 3 of 4 from 3-point range. Mavs, a 5-point halftime lead. Paul George, 0 points, 3 fouls in the first half. Here in the third quarter, trying to heat up the frustration from George. Bunch of rebounds. Gets it back, but he's looking for a foul. Winds up getting a technical. Those are easy to come by in this series. Clippers down 13 after three. Fourth quarter. Clips down a dozen. Kawhi not giving up. Oh, with authority. Kawhi had 35 points, 10 rebounds, but it wasn't nearly enough. This one, all Mavs. Look at the ball movement. All night. Luka had 28. That's Porzingis. He was huge. Mavs, a 13-point win. Doc Rivers, what? I just think they're playing well. Uh, and honestly, they're playing better than us right now, and we have to pick our play up. This goes to show you the West is, is tough. AFC just beat the first team yesterday. The, the West is tough. It's a tough conference. Any given night, any team, especially here, can win. And we full on seen that. So it's no surprise. Uh, what you have to do is come ready to play. And um, tonight was their night. So it's easy to harp on the Clippers and their struggles, but the story of the night is Luka. 28 points, 8 boards, 7 assists. He has 70 points in two career playoff games. Only George Mikan had more. Google him if you don't already know who that is. Here's Tim Legler. I think he played against Mikan for a couple of years early in his career. Kidding. Legs, if I were to say to you. <laughs> oh, that hurts. If I were to say to you that if Porzingis doesn't get thrown out, and I know I didn't believe he should have been from game one, We'd be sitting here talking about the Mavericks with the Clippers completely on the ropes because, candidly, they look like the better team in this series. If I said that, what would you say? Yeah, I would be shocked by that. Look, I know how good Dallas was historically, offensively this season, but we also thought this Clippers team was going to be a suffocating team on the perimeter. And I know Patrick Beverly didn't play last night, but he played in game one, and until Porzingis got ejected, they had no answers. What really surprised me about last night was how easily the bench was scoring on the Clippers without Luka to create shots for them. You had Boban in the first half came in and, and went off for a short stretch. And then Seth Curry and Trey Burke took turns in the second half, primarily with Luka Doncic on the bench with his fourth and fifth fouls. So those three guys go 19 for 28 from the field. Like Where is this vaunted Clippers defense we are expecting to see all season? This is a great sign for the Mavericks that they're operating this well offensively against this team. Very simple question here. The Clippers have been a lot of people's pick to win the championship from the, the minute the season started. Are they in trouble right now in the first round? Yeah, they're my pick too, and they are in trouble because I'm waiting to see when are they going to string together some possessions where I go, okay, they have figured this out and their defensive length and pressure is starting to affect the Mavericks. I think part of this is you can't speed Luka Doncic up. I mean, I think he's making that pretty apparent. We know how good he is, but to play this well now in a high-profile series, if he keeps this up, I mean, you're now start starting to talk about a guy that you go, okay, this is going to be the decade of Luka Doncic coming up. Um, so you know how good he is, but you still would expect the Clippers' pressure on the perimeter to start affecting these guys and forcing some turnovers and reducing their efficiency. And until Porzingis got ejected, they had their way in game one, 69 points basically through a half. And then they put up big numbers on them again last night. So it's not too early to say the, Maver the uh, Clippers are in trouble. Are they going to be able to adjust for game three to take control of this series? I'm not so sure about it right now. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.